Hi everyone, thanks for coming and thanks for ARM for the opportunity to present Prescient Therapeutics. We are an Australian-US company listed in Australia with private subsidiaries, uh, relatively new to the cell therapy field, about um, three years now. Um, a provocative image, yes, we don't apologise for our ambitions, but I think also to highlight that um, having the right technology is not enough. You need to have the right technology at the right time, and we think um, we find ourselves in a nice sweet spot looking to solve the problems that you're all very familiar with, this learned audience in cell therapy, uh, with two platforms, one um, Omnicar, which I'll introduce you to, and the other one, a recently announced um, cell therapy enhancement platform called Cell Prime. Where they overlap, they do so synergistically. So Omnicar is a universal immune receptor platform that we've licensed from UPenn, um, a deliberate collaboration between their cell biologists and protein engineers to come up with a modular system. Some of you might be familiar with some other modular systems. There's a handful of other approaches that um, we realise that the key to success and, and flexibility in cell therapy is via modularity. But what makes this very, very different, it's the only covalent system, and I'll go into why that's important in a minute. And for those who are unfamiliar with what universal immune receptors are, it decouples the, the cell and the signalling domain from the targeting ligand. So the cell is viable and inactive with half of the construct there until the clinician uh, administers the targeting ligand which binds to the antigen. Um, the, the tag and the anti-tag come together to form a fully armed CAR-T or, 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 or CAR immune cell if you like and you get on-demand tumor lysis. So that's basically how it works and in a little more detail this is the construct um, and we've got you know as you can see here we can use any targeting ligand. This is represented as an antibody. It doesn't need to be an antibody. That's where we're starting but it could be a nanobody, an affirmative or an aptima, a peptide, anything that binds to an antigen, we can simply tag. You might be familiar with spy tag and spy catcher, and that's what this is. We can use any targeting ligand bringing any antigen into play. And we've heard some excellent presentations today on exciting new cell types, and we're agnostic on targets, and we're agnostic on cell types. So we can use um, any immune cell and, uh, and put the catcher on it. So this brings into play exciting things like autoimmunity, where we can use um, CAR-T regs, and also situations where we can, um, we can tune these up and down in um, non-oncology applications. So that is uh, prescient starting with, with our internal programs with autologous T cells. It's a, it's a low risk place for us to start, but certainly that's not where we will end up. And we're certainly open to talking to people with novel binders and also with novel targets. So just to give you an overview of some of the control features, there's real data behind all of these, but just to illustrate it here is that um, un unlike current cell therapy approaches um, which don't allow for any post-infusion control. We are able to demonstrate a nice dose response that clinicians are used to by, uh, through administration of the binder in increasing amounts, you actually get a nice dose response inside a toxicity, um, which is good for, you know, for you know, the patient-to-patient -patient variability. In fact, we can also switch it on and switch it off. Uh, you'd be aware that there's some uh, organisations out there developing kill switches, um, they terminate the therapy, uh, which is um, not great if you've just administered a $350,000 cell therapy product, but through seizing binder administration, our system naturally switches off uh, through natural receptor turnover and also remembering that all the progeny cells are unarmed. So at all times, the clinician has control of the activity of these cells. But if the cells remain, you know, if they switch off, they remain viable but inactive. So through subsequent binder administration, they can be switched back on. This is good not only for safety, but also longevity. So um, through metronomic stimulation, you actually change the phenotype to a more desirable, longer lasting cell phenotype. So a key chinkanyama of CAR-T, as you might be aware, is uh, what happens if the angiogen is shared and you're left with all the side effects of a CAR-T and none of the benefits. Well, here we can simply switch out the binder and redirect this cell therapy product with, you know, with the single vector uh, post-infusion. And if we can do that, we can also multi-arm these for genuine multivalence. So what you can see here through this modularity, we don't need to over-engineer the cell necessarily. All of this can happen post-infusion. Uh, post 
we can give a racemic mixture of binders and they will arm in the proportions of what we administer, whether it's one to one to two and it will bind one to one to two. So it's a very obedient system. To illustrate just one of these features, I'll just um, show you some, some switching data that we announced this is um, a co-culture of GBM cells, either ex overexpressing HER2 or EGFRV3, and we administered a, uh, an Omnicar that has been pre-armed with, um, with EGFRV3 binders, and we see rapid cytotoxicity against, um, against those cells, leaving the HER2 positive cells alone. And at 20 hours, which is enough time for some receptor turnover, but also some, some progeny cells that are unarmed to, uh, to replicate, at 20 hours we administer um, a HER2 binder and we saw a dramatic um, shift there. We, it stopped killing the EGFRV3 cells and it immediately started killing the HER2 positive cells. And the differential there just could be a difference in affinity there. So again, we saw rapid switching um, from one to the other. Um, so again, demonstrating for the first time that with a single vector, we can target one and then on the fly, switch it to another target without the need to administer any new cells. A feature I um, failed to mention earlier on, the importance of covalent binding is the ability to pre-arm. You can imagine you don't want these things coming off. It's less frequent dosing of the binder when these, uh, when these are covalent. Um, the system is non-immunogenic, I, I forgot to mention. But also the ability to pre-arm these cells to infuse a fully functional product from the get-go, which is important. So in addition to, um, to you know, the clinical and scientific advantages of this modularity, there are some practical you know, reg and manufacturing considerations as well. If you wanted to do some of these things with conventional cars, um, including off the shelf, you would, you would need you know, six different runs, for example, six different constructs. Uh, this includes in, you know, some in vivo approaches. Uh, and we've seen even with some ISTs now that there's some utility in giving repeat doses of CAR Ts up to five, six, seven different infusions just through brute force chewing through the TME and, and you know, you know, trafficking these things to site. But, uh, but obviously this is an unviable approach that the whole industry is working towards. An advantage of Omnicar is we do that hard work effectively once, which is you make the cell once and without any lag we can you know, have off-the-shelf binders ready to, ready to go. There is no delay in administration of those binders. We can redirect on the fly. But also there is a single IND. There's one drug master file that can be dropped in. So long as you're not tinkering with the cell itself, any subsequent binder can, um, can drop into that drug master file. So there are some practical considerations as well. And just to uh, summarise our internal programs, we're, we're doing um, three. Our lead program is in AML. Um, AM, CAR-T shows a lot of promise in AML, but a number of problems are rapidly growing and rapidly mutating disease. So by the time you actually make the therapeutic product, often the disease has changed in real time mid-therapy. And also the fact that these are very fragile patients who can't tolerate a very vigorous therapy like CAR-T. But if you can titrate up to, to safe and efficacious levels, including layering on these uh, binders sequentially, that can be a very ad advantageous thing. And also the ability to switch these binders. We've recently announced a collaboration with MD Anderson with their proprietary library of TCR-like binders, which may not uh, might be limited on their own, but to plug these into the ecosystem on the fly is what they're very, very attracted to. So I think we think that's the first domino to fall. We've also got programs um, in solid tumours and and uh, and in GBM as well. Uh, once again, um, GBM analogous to AML and that rapidly growing, you know, the plasticity of disease means that one target's just not going to work, but the ability to create a truly multivalent product that you can control and, uh, and keep administering binders to is very attractive to, um, to clinicians. Switching gears now and talking about Cell Prime, which is our cell therapy enhancement platform. This is uh, ready for deployment right now into the clinic. So with Omnicar, we're about nine months away from the clinic. With Cell Prime M, where Cell Prime can be de deployed in two ways, M at the manufacturing stage during the expansion of, of these cells, and also Cell Prime A as an adjuvant. 
just to touch on cell prime M at the start. So we all know that T cells go from, you know, from as they mature from naive, long lasting, but no cytotoxicity all the way through to effector cells, which are very cytotoxic and not very long lasting. We all know that literature says that the desirable phenotype are the central memory cells. And here we've got, um, this is um, three weeks into administration, cheek bleeds from mice showing that there's 50% more uh, desirable cells and there's less effector cells. Um, it can double the performance of uh, a given CAR-T. This is one example here in syngenaic models of HER2, which are resistant to CAR-T, showing that we've, we've dramatically improved the performance of those. Um, doubling the, the proportion of helper cells, which as we know are important for um, you know, synergizing with cytotoxic cells. And also a significant increase in chemokine receptors, which are important for tumour trafficking and penetrance. So that's a, that's a little bit of a walk-up start that can be dropped into the process. It's, we see rapid genetic changes in the first 15 minutes of, um, of deploying cell prime M into the expansion protocols, and it doesn't add any time to any, um, any manufacturing protocol. It's, it's, uh, we've got GMP grade material ready to go. When it's used as an adjuvant, there are a number of advantages. It uh, boosts tumour killing and survival. We reduce Tregs by two-thirds a dramatic expansion of CAR-Ts uh, in vivo. In, in fact, you know, twice, but when we add it with cell prime M, it's, it's up to ninefold more, which is, I'm sure you'll agree, very dramatic. The ability of these to penetrate into the tumours, in fact, up to four times more penetration of CAR-T cells into tumours. Um, and again, synergi the, the effects are pronounced when you, we see them with cell prime M. So when we give this in, uh, again, a highly resistant model where CAR T cells fail to work, these, these are uh, syngenaic models of um, a, in the mammary fat pad, it's nice TME there. Uh, there is an, an advantage when we add cell prime A as an adjuvant, but when we add cell prime A to CAR T cells that have been made with cell prime M, the effects are even more pronounced. Um, and in fact, this was the, the, uh, the only mouse with detectable tumour in it at day 12. Uh, in addition to tumour reduction, a significant improvement in survival. In Australia, we're limited by ethics on extending these studies out, but we can see that there was no effect from CAR-T, but we had a uh, significant effect that we weren't able actually to see the, uh, the optimal outcome there due to ethics. Yeah, decreasing Tregs by two-thirds, which I'm sure we'll all agree is very important. And we can see here um, the, the ability of this to boost expansion within the host of CAR T cells, not just on its own, but with you know, huge synergism with cell prime M. And again, you know, CAR T penetration of you know, three, three times more with, uh, with CD8s and with uh, uh, four times more with CD8s and three times more with CD4s. So that's a, a, a brief um, summary of what we have as a reminder. So we have Omnicar and that's about conferring um, control and multivalence through modularity and we'd be delighted to speak with anyone with novel binders. If you're working on any type of nanobody, antibody, peptide, we can tag that and immediately deploy that for use in cell therapy. So please come and speak to us. Um, and Cell Prime M is really focusing on improving uh, the, the quality of the cell itself through manufacturing enhancement to create a more, a more youthful, more effective product. And if it can work well with next generation therapies, we've proven that it can work well with um, an existing cell therapy protocol right now, very low interventional step. And Cell Prime A can work with all of these. In fact, we're going to be our own first customer um, on Cell Prime M and Cell Prime A with our, um, you know, with our first clinical study in nine months' time, and that can work as, as an adjuvant alongside, um, alongside all of these. So I think that's me, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. That's amazing, an amazing technology. But I got a question. You mentioned that the binder is non-immunogenic. But what about the antibodies, you know, that they're going to, you know, bind to the target? They are non-immunogenic too, or no? Yeah, so I'll be very clear. We are not a, an antibody or, or a binder discovery company. 
um, the magic of what we do is in modularity. We're starting with binders. The reason we're starting with antibodies is we're able to take off the shelf freeware, if you like, antibodies that have already been approved, already been in use, and we're simply tagging those, and that's our starting point. That, that won't be our end point, but, um, but yeah, so what, what we need to be concerned with is the immunogenicity of the tag and the catcher, which is uh, basically at, um, it's not only better than humanised antibodies, it's comparable with human antibodies. Uh, in, uh, so, yeah, we, we all always have to be careful that any novel binder that we use, if it's a third party binder, is not only effective but non immunogenic. It also helps that we're using these at one thousandth the dose that you would use as a, a therapeutic antibody. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. And that's it. Thank you very much.